Thousands of local jobs right at your fingertips at Kelloland Employment. Search, research area employers, even create job email alerts. Your job search just got easier with Kelloland Employment at Kelloland.com. Coming up, how local health officials are preparing for a surge of COVID-19 cases. Plus, the impact the temporary closure of Smithfield Foods could have on the food supply. Good morning, this is Kelly Land on the go with all you need to know in news and weather as you start your day. We'll get to our top stories in just a moment, but first, let's send it over to meteorologist Brian Karstens for a check on our weather. All right, we do have winter headlines for Easter weekend. We begin with that. Right now, Black Hills area and now extending into northern Nebraska. Winter storm watches are posted beginning tomorrow morning and continuing into Sunday morning for parts of south central South Dakota. This does not include Sioux Falls at this time. However, there could be accumulating snow farther east, and that's something that uh, I'm sure that subject will be expanded as we go through today's forecast and hearing more about that this weekend. In the short term, today looks better. 53 Sioux Falls, 57 Yankton, 64 degrees Chamberlain and Oklahoma, and looking at 65 in Rapid City. That's a quick look at weather, the complete forecast for the weekend in just a few minutes. Thanks, Brian. South Dakota saw another significant jump in COVID-19 cases yesterday. There are now 447 cases in the state. More than 300 of those cases are in Minnehaha and Lincoln counties. 161 people have now recovered from the illness. Minnesota has recorded its largest one-day increase in deaths due to COVID-19. The Minnesota Department of Health announced 11 new deaths, raising the state's total to 50. The department also reported 88 new confirmed cases yesterday, bringing the positive cases to more than 1,200. In Iowa, the number of positive cases of coronavirus is approaching 1,300. The virus has now claimed 29 lives in the state. Infections have now been found in 79 of Iowa's 99 counties. At a news conference yesterday, Governor Kim Reynolds urged Iowans to focus on what they can do individually to stop the spread of the virus. If we all just, again, dig deep and practice and do what we've asked you to do, we will continue to see the curve flatten. We will start to see the numbers drop, and we will start to talk about how we dial back up this economy and how we start to open things back up instead of talking about how we close things down. Also yesterday morning, Governor Reynolds said Iowa's capacity to care for COVID-19 patients and available resources are very good at this time. Even though we're all hoping for the best, local hospitals are preparing for the worst. Sanford and Avera are getting ready for a surge in COVID-19 cases. They're expecting to see more patients than ever before. Avera is turning the Prairie Center into a 150-bed hospital. Sanford has also launched a new test for high-risk patients. This is another significant step in our community uh, and our response to this virus. It enable us, it enables us to deliver results within 90 minutes. Patients that typically receive care in the Prairie Center will be notified of any changes in the location of their clinic uh, sites. Both are focusing on getting more equipment, having enough staff, and making sure there are enough beds for patients. Smithfield Foods in Sioux Falls will shut down for three days following an outbreak of COVID-19. At least 80 of its employees have tested positive for coronavirus. It's now considered a hot spot for COVID-19, but the federal government is urging the meatpacking plant to stay open, which a lot of people are criticizing. I don't think people realize um, as one of the largest pork producing plants in the country, what shutting down a place like Smithfield does to the food supply chain in this country. Mayor Tenhaken says Smithfield Foods is taking the outbreak serious and will be sanitizing the plant and reviewing some of its social distancing policies at the plant during the shutdown. The mayor says he'll wait and see what happens at Smithfield after the three-day shutdown before he decides if more drastic measures need to be taken. Mayor Tenhaken is also urging other business leaders to take precautions now. Otherwise, he says they could find themselves dealing with 10 or 20 cases in a matter of days. Ted Aiken says you have a responsibility to your employees and everyone they come in contact with. He says if you work for a business that isn't making changes, you need to talk to your employer. Governor Kristi Noem also addressed the situation at Smithfield during a press conference Thursday. She says the health and safety of Smithfield employees and the community's public health are paramount. The governor says she's been in close communication with the Smithfield president, and the state secretary of health says there is no concern over products potentially being contaminated. We do not have that concern at the Department of Health. 
Um, and again, we will continue to work with uh, the management and uh, folks at Smithfield to ensure that um, moving forward that that's not a concern in the future. Smithfield says that Sioux Falls plant provides nearly 130 million servings of food per week to the U.S. Brian? All right, as we look at weather here for your Easter weekend, here's the latest on our storm projection. You can see a little bit of rain here developing late tonight and early tomorrow morning mixed with some snow in the Black Hills. A shower chance will expand towards Sioux Falls tomorrow afternoon. Temperatures still in the 50s, low to mid 50s in Sioux Falls tomorrow, but that's it for a while for temperatures that are anything close to normal. We're going to see snow Saturday night into northern Nebraska and the extension into southeast South Dakota Sunday morning. This is very important because given the time of day here, we start off in the morning hours with that heavier snow. It's got a better chance to stick to the ground and then the wind will be out of the north and it'll be blustery and mostly indoor weather there. So plan accordingly to that. I do think a lot of that snow will slide east here Sunday evening and beyond that we're going to be below normal much of next week. Normal highs now are in the mid and upper 50s and we'll be at least 20 degrees below that level a couple of days. Snow forecast. Well, here's what we've done. Sioux Falls, two to four inches. I'm going to lean more in that range right now. Uh, again, it'll be sloppy, heavy, wet snow as it falls. There could be additional or heavier accumulations in northwestern Iowa. I would not be opposed to adding some of that into areas between Sioux Falls and Yankton. Uh, keep that in mind, an extension into northern Nebraska too. There will be localized spots that could get to that six inch mark. So this one's kind of typical for mid-April. It's heavy, wet snow. It can fall pretty fast. Also, there's a sharp cutoff to the north of Highway 14 that we are aware of, and that too will greatly impact the uh, the outlook there for the north. Let's wrap it up on your forecast. Today, nice on this Good Friday, 53 Sioux Falls. Same thing in Aberdeen and looking at highs into the 60s across the west and central. Seven-day forecast, 30s for early next week. will slowly moderate toward maybe day six and day seven, but we're still below normal all the way through the seven-day forecast. So today's uh, the day for Aberdeen to hit 53, then 30s next week. Keep in mind, Pierre, you could get some snow and rain out of this as well, but the heavier amounts will be focused in the Black Hills into southwest South Dakota, and that's going to take a toll on those temperatures. Only 29 for a high on Monday. Guys? All right, thanks, Brian, and thanks for joining us for Kelloland on the Go. Be sure to join us on air for midday in Kelloland. Until then, you can get up to the minute developments right here on Kelloland.com. Now go have a great day.